Greetings friends around the world. My name is Alexander Sarsavedic and this is Bible News Prophecy Program. Welcome. I would love to remind you of the fact that the Feast of Trumpets, Temple Institute and Herbert W. Armstrong all had one and the same message for all of us which meant choose life. The Temple Institute had the following in the newsletter as a pre-Feast of Trumpets which they call Rosh Hashanah and uh, which was on Monday. Related to choosing life, choose life, Deuteronomy 30, verse 9. You are all standing this day before Hashem, your God, the leaders of your tribes, you elders and you officers, every man in Israel, you young children and women, and you co con your convert who is within you, your camp, both, both your woodcutters and your water drawers, Deuteronomy 29, verse 9 and 10. You are all, all of you, all of us, each and every one of us, dear friends, standing upright equal from the greatness to the least, the oldest to the youngest, the most powerful to the most vulnerable. Standing this day before Hashem your God, this day, today, the only day, yesterday is gone and is no more. When tomorrow arrives, it will be today. Today is the only day. When we stand before Hashem our God, there is only one day, today, the here and the now. When we stand and share our presence before God's presence, there is no past, good, bad or otherwise, and the future will only amount to the strength and integrity of our intentions today. You are all, all of you, all of me, the individual, all of me standing before Hashem in God this day, the best of me and the least of me, me and my finest and at my least Fine, standing and being accounted for, standing and saying to the Eternal, I am whom you are, have created, I am a work in progress, steadily working to improve and perfect my being, my North Star being, the me that you intended when you first breathed life into the dust of my earthly being. Now the Torah reading of Nitzavim or standing is read every year, just before this Rosh Hashanah, and it's soaring message and of accountability and of the potential for teshuva, repentance and return to God. And also it's the uh, accountability and message of the accessibility and the nearness of God's requirements and of the open path toward life and happiness in the presence of Hashem, which seems, seems, serves as a guide Book for the day of Rosh Hashanah and the entire entirety of the holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and Shmini Atzeret, which make up uh, the month of Tishri, or better, or better, Etanim, the first month of the new civil year. Now we are all God's children, equal in His eyes, they say, and we have honor and distinction, the privilege and responsibility of standing directly before God. We are gra granted the limitless opportunities of standing before God today, with no past to weigh us down and a future that is ours is to shape. Well, in a radio broadcast, the late Pastor General of the old, now demised, Worldwide Church of God, Herbert W. Armstrong, said the following about choosing life. He said, now there are laws you're going to have to choose every one of you. Now if you neglect so great salvation as God has offered you, you're choosing, you're choosing the wrong way and you're sentencing yourself to death, the penalty of sin. So have to choose life, you have to choose life and do it of your own will voluntarily, your own volition your own free will, or you can never have salvation. No one can talk you into it, no salesman, no preacher. I don't care how much he loves you or how much he desires to see you saved, he can't do it. You know, long ago I learned that, and I've quit trying to talk people into it, I just preach the truth. I want to tell you, my friends, your whole relationship with God is a private, personal relationship between you and God. Now, I do not say for a minute that we are not influenced by circumstances. I fully understand that God can bring about circumstances that will bring us to a place where we look on things differently and where perhaps we are going to choose the right way and be willing to do it. But still God doesn't force you. No, He is, he is going to force you one way and that is all 
and that is to make your own decisions. So he forces us to make our own decisions. Then the article continues and says, now, this was actually the radio program, but it's, it can also be read as an article. The radio program continues. Now God says in verse 19, well, let's go back to verse 17 just a moment first. But if thine heart turn away so that you will not hear, you see God allows us to turn away. He allows us to rebel when he says if, if he was forcing us to be saved, if he was forcing us to obey him, he couldn't say if you do the other. So that will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. I denounce unto you this day. Ye and you shall surely perish. There it is. You are going to decide what is the outcome of your life and your destiny. Are you going to inherit eternal life as God's gift? Or are you going to perish? Are you going to die? The wages of sin is death and it isn't eternal death. The wages of sin is death. Just death. Now God says again in verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I, God Almighty the Ruler, have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose, now God says we have to choose and that's an order. And God is going to make you choose and even if you try not to choose and neglect, you are choosing automatically. You are choosing death, you are choosing to perish, you are choosing the penalty. But you, you cannot choose life. You know, you can choose life or you cannot. Well, you can indeed. It is up to you. Now, God is the great ruler. He said here, I've said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. What does he want us to choose? Life. He even commands you to choose life, but he allows you to disobey. Now, he forces you to choose. He allows you to disobey. I think we better get these words between what God forces and what he allows straightened out. I really had to get it straightened out in my own mind here a little bit. And I just want to make it plain to all of you listening in. Now he wants you to choose life that you and your seed may live. That you may love the Lord thy God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cleave unto him, for he is thy life. Oh, I tell you, I tell you, that's wonderful. When you come to see it, you know, it's wonderful. You know, I'm glad that God has made us free moral agents and that God has decreed with his sovereign rulership that we have to make the decision. God will not make it for you. You must make it for yourself. Now, in the kingdom of God is a family. If you choose life, my friends, you'll first be begotten of God and later you are going to be born of God. Yes, God wants us to choose life and to live eternally and abundantly. Which is something that, you know, Pope Francis stated last week or some weeks ago actually, show he, he does not understand uh, what, what, what he was talking about. And we have a short video entitled, Does Pope Francis Misunderstand the Purpose for Creation? Do you? As far as the Jews go, although they call this day, indeed, uh, they call it basically uh, the, the new year. And it certainly is not, you see, because uh, they call it Rosh Hashanah. And uh, they admit that that was not the biblical name. Rosh Hashanah, which literally means head of the year, and it was not, not called Rosh Hashanah until Talmudic times. This is from Kramer Amy, uh, J. Rosh Hashanah Origins, copyright 98-1999, everything Jewish incorporated. So that's about their name of the Hashanah. Brethren and friends, the Feast of Trumpets that was kept yesterday on Monday, Monday, September 26th, is a holiday that has a major Christian significance. Significance, Major Christian significance. It's trumpet, it's actually is resurrection to life. The Bible tells us, you know, of this whole, that holiday, where trumpets are to be blown in the seventh month, on the first day. Now, when is the biblical seventh month? 
Well, this feast trumpet is called Rosh Hashanah by the modern Jews. Jews believe that this is the day names uh, that this is the day names as are inscribed in the Book of Life. The their names that is is inscribed in the Book of Life somewhere between this feast, Yom Teruah, the feast of trumpets, and also the the so-called Yom, the, the, as they call it, Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement. Now, the New Testament also speaks of the Book of Life, as well as a resurrection, that occurs at the seventh and the last trump when Jesus returns. Now, is this a day Christians have long observed? And what are some of the lessons that it teaches us? How do you choose life? Are obedience and the Ten Commandments important? Do many who profess Christ not understand God's plan of salvation because they do not observe this and other biblical holidays. Well, we address it in a teaching by Dr. Bob Thiel called Trumpet Resurrection to Life. Trumpet Resurrection to Life. Now, the Feast of Trumpets, just like any other holiday, runs from sunset to sunset. This year, 2022, it was on this Monday. And the question is, have you chosen the way of life, so that you will observe it. Have you chosen the way of life that will lead you into the eternal life? Have you made the right choice, dear friends? Yes, it is very important. Yes, God is a great ruler, and He has said before us life and death, and blessing and cursing, and therefore He said, choose life. Choose life. That is His call for us to uh, choose what is pertaining to eternal life. Now let me just comment a little bit more about the a uh, little bit more about the, uh, the the Jewish reckoning and Temple Institute. Institute. Uh, the thing is that uh, we are all God's children. We are indeed equal in His sight, and the Jews uh, would say that we have, have all honor and distinction, the privilege and responsibility of standing directly before the eternal, before God. We are all granted the limitless opportunities of standing before God today with no past to weigh us down and no future that is ours to shape. And uh, here is uh, what the Jewish commentators say about this day. For this commandment, the commandment to keep this feast of trumpets, which I command you this day, is not concealed from you, nor is it far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and fetch it for us to tell us, to tell it to us so that we can fulfill it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and fetch it for us to tell us and to tell it us, uh, to tell that to us so that we can fulfill it. Rather, this thing is a very close to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can fulfill it. So it is so close, dear friends. It is so accessible. And what we have just written is a quote from the Bible. You know, uh, it is so close to us. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 30, 30 that I've just read, and verse 20. It's close to us. It's uh, accessible. It's not far away. If we only persist. It's so achievable. God asks us what He knows we can fulfill if only we set our hearts, our minds and our souls to do it. And if we persist in doing it indeed. That is what God wants from us. So, uh, are you, have you cho chosen life? Have you made the right choice? My name is Alexander Sashavedic. Until next time, goodbye friends.